In this video, we'll be talking about a class of immunosuppressant drugs known as calcineurin inhibitors. So calcineurin inhibitors are potent immunosuppressant and they inhibit the molecule known as calcineurin, which is a calcium dependent phosphatase enzyme. Calcineurin is involved in the process of naive T cell to activated T cell transformation. So activation of T cells require the activity of calcineurin. So we can clearly understand when calcineurin is not functional or inhibited by a certain class of drug, naive T cell cannot be activated. But this is very useful for the treatment of various autoimmune diseases such as psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, etc. Also, immunosuppression is required after solid organ transplant, let's say for a kidney transplant or for say a liver transplant. Now, though these drugs are really important to modulate the immune response, they have defined side effects like nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, hirsutism and then ultimately gingival, gingival uh, hyperplasia. So just to put things together, all these calcineurin inhibitors are potent nephrotoxic agent. They can potentially compromise your renal function. But anyway, let's focus on how calcineurin inhibitor possibly works. So obviously we can understand it works by preventing T cell to get activated. So we have to learn how T cell is activated at the first place, how it happens in the normal scenario, then only we can understand how it is inhibited. So here is an antigen presenting dendritic cell, which is presenting a segment of antigen on a top of class 2 MHC molecule. So the TCR and MHC interaction gives one signal for T cell activation. The second signal is provided by CD80 and CD86 and CD28 interaction. That is potential signal 2. And the signal 3 for activation is the autocrine signaling by interleukin 2. All these three signals combined together can activate the T cell. Now here is again we are looking at the overall process of activation in bit more molecular details. So the TCR ultimately activates phospholipase C. Phospholipase C is a molecule or an enzyme that cleaves PIP2 which is a membrane phospholipid and creates second messengers like IP3 uh, and DAG. IP3 can bind to IP3 receptor present on the endoplasmic reticulum and allow the internal store of calcium to be released in the cytosol. Cytosolic calcium would rise and it would bind to calmodulin. Calmodulin bound calcium can further activate calcineurin. Calcineurin can eventually, it's a phosphatase, so it would dephosphorylate stuff. One of the things that it dephosphorylate is basically NFAT transcription factor. In fact, transcription factor can only translocate into the nucleus when it is dephosphorylated and this dephosphorylation event is triggered by calcineurin. So once in fat is inside the nucleus, it can allow the transcription of the interleukin 2 gene and interleukin 2 is produced which give rise to the autocrine stimulation for T cell activation. Now this biological process that we discussed so far is disrupted by the calcineurin inhibitor. So we can imagine if we have cyclosporin or we can have uh, uh, tachlorimus, all these particular compounds can actually inhibit the calcineurin. Now if calcineurin is inhibited, in fact cannot move into the nucleus and cannot transcribe the interleukin 2 gene. So obviously the co-stimulatory signal that the T cell was supposed to receive is now not received. That is how T cell activation is halted or compromised. Now underlying many of these events of autoimmunity and graft rejection, T cell activity is important. If you want to learn more about that, I button is there. You can get all those videos there. So just to recap, cyclosporin actually interact with a combine compound called cyclophilin and this compound actually prevents the calcineurin activity and uh, tacrolimus actually interact with uh, FKBP protein, a binding protein and that prevents the calcineurin activity.
So overall, calcineurin activity is prevented. This is the molecular phenomena. As a result of this phenomena, the N fat cannot be dephosphorylated, cannot translate into the nucleus and cannot transcribe the gene for interleukin 2. So now we have a deeper molecular insight about the calcineurin inhibitor action. So just to recap what we learned, it's a quick summary. So we looked at uh, cyclosporin, which is a calcineurin inhibitor, which binds to cyclophilin and blocks T cell activation by preventing the transcription of interleukin 2. It is used for treatment of psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis and many other autoimmune disorder, but it has potent nephrotoxic effect. Also, uh, gingival hyperplasia and hirsutism is actually associated with these uh, side effects. Then the tacrolimus drug is basically another calcineurin inhibitor but works in a different way. It binds with a FK506 binding protein. It blocks the T cell activation. Again, the uh, end result is same. It prevents interleukin 2 transcription and thereby it is also a useful agent for uh, basically, especially when the time of uh, solid organ transplant, it works like a potent immunosuppressive agent. But it also has similar nephrotoxic and neurotoxic effect like the cyclosporin. And uh, it also increases the risk of diabetes and neurotoxicity. But the difference is it doesn't have any gingival hyperplasia or hirutism kind of uh, side effect. So I hope this video was useful and insightful. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.